All right, welcome to part six on this review of Rapid Chest Improvement by Michael De La Maza. And uh, we're going to get on to the last uh, element, uh, skill-based element, that Michael thought was necessary for rapid adult chest improvement. So we've covered chest vision and tactical skill, and we're going to move on to thought process. So Michael had a structured eight-step process that he used on every chest move. Every time an opponent made a move, he had a process that he went through. And um, he developed this by a process of experimentation. He experimented with different processes until he found the one that worked best for him. And um, I won't go over all eight steps or anything like that, but basically he combines an initial review of the opponent's move. So he looks and see if it's threatening anything. And then he looks for tactical opportunities in the position. So he has like a, a process for doing this. And the process is kind of bifurcated in the sense that following this initial review that's more tactically based and responding to threats and looking for tactics, you know, for yourself. Um, then he moves on to this kind of uh, simplified or abbreviated process for coming up with a plan, like a more of the strategical arm, um, uh, you know, of, of his move thought process. And he does this on every move. And um, this takes training. It's the, it's a skill. So you notice all of his stuff is skill-based, even, even the thought process. And um, I do think that, you know, thought process is very important in chess. When I work with my coach, I have I repeatedly make certain thing, you know, same problems over and over with thought process. It's, it's frustrating. I think it's kind of common um, in adults. And so I can see the value of having a very structured thought process. Um, I'm sure it kind of, it, it can become kind of boring and mechanical, I'm sure, but his goal is to win. And um, it would make sense that if his focus is to, you know, get those squiggly lines on the game graphs, the computer analysis out of his games to get rid of those by not missing tactics, not missing threats that your opponent is making and trying to spot tactics that are available for you. Um, I could see how that actually really would work. Um, cause I, I think the number of people that would actually have as, um, I guess, consistent of a thought process that he has and one that's so focused on like tactics and vision. Um, he probably doesn't ever face anybody that, that is that disciplined with their thought process. And, you know, like thinking about myself in games, I've lost a lot because I'm thinking of these big picture ideas, you know, trying to figure out, come up with a, some kind of strategical plan or a, a way of moving forward. And then I just miss obvious stuff. And I mean, I, I lose a lot of games that way. And so, you know, just kind of like my overall thoughts, I do think that, you know, I think it is valid. He arrived at it through experimentation, figuring out what worked best for him. And I think, you know, what works best for him is not going to be the same thing that works best for everybody. Um, I do think certainly there are some elements that I think everybody should probably incorporate into their thought process if they decide to, to go down um, the path that he did. Um, but one thing I do find interesting is that I'll put a link to it, but it reminded me of um, this uh, website called Chess Chess Master School, I believe, International Chess School or something like that. I'll put a link to it. But they have a thought process, and a large part of their thought process is looking at the consequences of your opponent's move and also looking at any threats that your opponent makes. That's like a huge part of it. And there's like training within their program, I believe, like aim specifically to try to increase your skills. Because if you think about it, if you look at the consequences of your opponent's move, that will lead you to noticing tactics. And if you think about the consequences of your move, and I'm talking like geometrical things or just no longer controlling certain squares, opening up diagonals, there's all kinds of different consequences of moves. But if a person could somehow incorporate that into a thought process, fully appreciate the threats your opponents are making, scan the thing and see if there's any tactical opportunities, and then have like a simplified process, you know, for the strategical part of coming up with your plan so that you're not overwhelmed and just distracted 
and then overlooking these obvious things that tend to like actually determine the outcome of most games at like a club player level. I think that um, I think there's a lot of validity to his, you know, his concept of his thought process. And what's interesting, it also made me think of, um, and I, I should have looked this up, but I believe it's called like thinking inside the box or something. But Jacob Ugard has this simplified like three step process for coming up um, with like moves or like a plan. And it's kind of somewhat similar to some thoughts of De La Maza. And I, so I think there is something um, to be said for putting most of the time and emphasis of your move on the like tactics and threats and the consequences of in the position and then putting less time and having a more streamlined, highly focused process for just coming up with a strategical move and moving on and not wasting a ton of time on it. So that basically covers all the key elements, this the skill based elements of his chess improvement plan. So I think I'll just um wrap it up there i'll just do probably just one last video where i just give my overall thoughts on this and and uh decide if it's something that i would you know want to pursue if so like do i just go like whole hog on this thing and um whatnot so anyway i hope you found that interesting it is an actually really interesting book um i'm kind of glad i thought about it again and i actually read the entire book um you know in the past i just kind of skimmed through it and, and whatever but um it's hard to deny what he had, what he accomplished, you know, in his over the board. Um, one thing I would note um, is that he did this in early two thousand, late nineties, early two thousand, before we had, you know, smartphones and um, just constant dis electronic distractions all the time. So I think it was an easier time to like find the focus um, and discipline to do this. But it doesn't mean a person couldn't do that now. And I mean, what a what an advantage in itself, I think that would be, um, you know, if in order to, you know, got through this intense program, you had to like, cut out a lot of other distractions, you may find benefits outside of chess improvement. So but anyway, that's kind of rambling. And, and I'll, um, I'll kind of put my thoughts, you know, just a few quick thoughts, I won't spend too much time, but, um, and make another video on just kind of my final conclusion. So anyway, I hope you found these videos. Um, interesting and useful. And I'll, you know, of course, all these ones, I'll have links to his book on Amazon. Um, you know, if you wanted to, I would suggest if you find it interesting, just read it and um, let him present the case to you. So anyway, have a good one.